So today I've got my hands on the most powerful mini PC we have ever seen on this channel to date. So this is the B-Link GTR6. This box is pretty leveled up with branded quality components, very good specifications and plenty of upgrade options. Wait till you see this one in action. And what's incredible about the B-Link GTR6 is the price. This costs only 669 on the official B-Link site. You can also opt for bare bones, so no RAM or storage included for only 479. And then you can go ahead and select your own choice of RAM and storage. And I will show you how easy it is to access the internals a little bit later in the video. So this mini PC is powered by the AMD Ryzen 9 6900HX with a base clock speed of 3.3 gigahertz and a turbo of up to 4.9 gigahertz. For graphics, we've got the AMD Radeon 680M integrated and this mini PC comes with 32 gigs of DDR5 RAM. Configuration is 16 gigabytes times two and it is dual channel memory. Now for storage, we have a 500 GB Kingston branded M.2 NVMe SSD and that's actually a Gen 4.0. And furthermore, you also have an additional M.2 SATA 3 SSD slot free to use and this supports a maximum of two terabyte ssd drives this mini pc does support the latest wi-fi 6e and you're getting 2.5 gigabits per second ethernet which is crazy speeds furthermore bluetooth version 5.2 this does support usb type c and you've got plenty of usb 3 ports windows 11 professional comes pre-installed and you've got quad 8k display outputs so four HDMI 2.1 ports on this thing. And this box features a very efficient dual fan cooling system. So this is no doubt gonna be a powerful all-rounder, which should easily be able to run everything we throw at it. So can't wait to begin testing this. But first of all, inside the box, you will find, you get two top covers. So the top cover is interchangeable. You're also getting a short HDMI cable and a long HDMI cable. Now this also comes with a metal mount and a bunch of screws. So you could actually mount the mini PC on the back of your monitor. We've got a power cable and a power supply, which looks pretty much like a laptop power supply. And I'll give you a quick close up of the voltage information. So last, but certainly not least, the mini PC itself. So nice looking box, uh, finished with a chrome trim going all the way around, um, predominantly made from metal apart from the top plastic. This also has a very convenient fingerprint reader built into the top. The removable plates are actually made from plastic. So it should be quite straightforward to remove and the top is simply clipped in. So you can quite easily remove the top using a flat screwdriver. Okay, and I can also show you the cooling fan on top. You can even see some copper pipe business going on there. Um, there is another cooling fan inside, which I'll show you in a bit. Let me just quickly show you what the red cover looks like. I haven't clipped it in yet because I'm still not sure what, which color I want. So that's how that looks. So it's nice that you're able to change the design. I think I'm gonna go with the default. Um, I like the darker default color and that's simply gonna clip in. On the front, we've got physical power button, a clear CMOS button. We've got a USB 3 port, type C port for data and a headphone jack. And you can see the Ryzen 9 stickers right there. On the side, there is nothing, just got ventilation, it says GTR. On the back, you've got your amazing connectivity. So power socket, 2.5 gigabit per second LAN. We've got four HDMI 2.1 ports and each of them can output in 8K at 60 Hertz. You've got two more USB 3 ports, followed by two USB 2 ports. If we keep going, nothing on this side. And that brings us back to the front. And here is the bottom of the mini PC. You can see some information there, quick settings, um, how to enter BIOS and boot options. And then you've got four screws enabling you to access the internals, which is exactly what we're gonna do right now. So let's quickly get those four screws open. And you've got this rubberized tab, which you can just use to lift the back cover off. Check it out, guys. Here's your second cooling fan, which covers the RAM and storage. Now, to access the upgrades and remove this fan cover, you need to remove three more screws. So one from here, one over here, and one over here. And make sure you're using a magnetic screwdriver to make things easier for you. Now you can lift this fan cover off, but be careful as it is connected to the board, as expected right there. 
All right, so here's a close up on the components. So we've got two 16 gigabyte Kingston branded RAMs. They are dual channel and DDR5. On this side over here, you can see your main storage. It's a PCIe 4.0 NVMe M2 SSD. That's a 500 gigabyte Kingston, but you've also got a free slot next to it, and that is an M.2 SATA 3. And so you can add a second storage. Both of these support a maximum of two terabytes. So it's really nice to see how easy the upgrade options are uh, for these B-Link mini PCs. A very neat layout, and you can see you've got dedicated cooling for RAM and storage, which is neat. So let's put this back together. So without any further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and get this all set up, and we are gonna find out exactly how good the B-Link GTR6 really is. I'll be right back. Now, first of all, I ran a boot up speed test, and this mini PC took 15 seconds to fully load to the Windows desktop. So this is the full version of Windows 11 Professional. I am connected to my 1080p capture card, so my desktop resolution is currently set to 1080p, but of course, you can hook this up to a 4K or even 8K display. Now let's check out these system properties. As you can see, we are running Windows 11 Professional with the AMD Ryzen 9 6900 HX. You can see the clock speed, 3.3 gigahertz. It's 32 gigs of RAM with 64-bit OS, and it's already activated and ready to use. If we have a quick look at the system storage info, we have 500 gigs of internal storage, from which 476 gigs are usable, and from that, we have 432 gigs free to use. And the second drive you are seeing is my 64 gig flash drive, which contains all my 4K samples, which we're gonna test right now. So let's go ahead and play some 4K video samples from a USB drive using the default Windows Media Player. So first video is the high bitrate 4K Jellyfish demo, which is playing absolutely fine. I also tested the 180 megabits per second video, and that also played nice and smooth. But when I tested the 400 megabit per second video file, it actually struggled, which definitely should not be the case. So I suspect there is some sort of codec compatibility issue, which I'm gonna show you how to fix in a minute. But before that, just to make sure, I'm going to try playing back some 4K60 with HDR. And as you can see, the first file is playing back smooth, but the colors looked completely washed out. So it's not picking up the HDR in this video at all. And in this second sample video, HDR10 looks slightly better, but still not quite there. So to fix these playback issues, I just downloaded and installed the K-Lite Mega Codec Pack, which is available free of charge. Links are in the description box. And now playing back the Jellyfish demos, you can see that they are all playing back. Super smooth, much better than before, including the largest 400 megabit per second video file. And also playing back 4K60 with HDR is now playing perfectly fine as it should. So you can see the real difference after installing the codec pack. So now this mini PC is able to play a wide range of different 4K file types, including HDR formats with no issues. So now we're moving on to some video streaming on YouTube. And yes, it does support 4K60 with HDR. And you can see that the streaming quality and performance is very good with no issues. So let's go ahead and play a few more trailers. Dad, I know you think I'm crazy. going to die. Maybe not. Goodbye to you, my trusted friend. What I had to do. To protect our world. So next up, I loaded up Netflix from a web browser and I was able to stream a maximum of 1080p. And when connected to a 4K screen, I was able to stream Netflix in 4K with HDR, along with Dolby Atmos. Same with Amazon Prime, full HD streaming from my capture card and 4K streaming from my 4K TV. Other streaming services will also support the maximum resolution of your display. Now moving on to my favorite test, the gaming test. Starting off with GTA 5. Here are the graphic settings. So resolution actually set to 720p, 60 Hertz and graphics set to normal just to see what happens. And you can see we're achieving just over 103 frames per second. The game is playing super smooth with no issues. Oops, my bad. And you can see the TDP is at currently 38 watts. 
So I just wanted to show you what this can do at 720p. Let's go ahead and boost that resolution to full HD and see how it plays. So back to the graphic settings, I boosted it to 1080p 60Hz and I also bumped up the textures and graphic settings all to very high. And as you can see, the performance is still very good, achieving well over 70 FPS. You could even turn on VSync to lock that to consistent 60 FPS. But I just wanted to show you what this can do at 1080p. I'm quite impressed with this mini PC so far. Definitely feeling the power over the past reviewed mini PCs. This is quite a jump in performance. Now the next game we're testing is WWE 2K22, which is a very graphically intense AAA title uh, released this year. So it's locked to 1080p resolution, 60 hertz. Texture quality has been set to standard and everything else I have dropped down to medium quality. So the game looks and plays pretty good, achieving a steady 60 frames, very playable and enjoyable. Nice to be able to play this game on a mini PC. Awesome, awesome stuff. Now, while we're here, I actually want to share my favorite settings for this game, which I prefer to use. So I set textures and model quality both to high. I switch off shadows and I set the shader quality to medium. I then reduce the audience density to 80% and switch off motion blur. Now this will give you a faster and smoother 60 FPS, but graphics also look slightly better, especially the characters. If you don't care too much about the audience density, you could actually drop that down further, maybe below 50%, and then be able to turn everything up to high, including motion blur. So ultimately, this game plays pretty well at 1080p, achieving 60 frames. So next up, we are emulating PS3 playing Fight Night Champion using RPCS3. Resolution is set to the 720p PS3 native at 30 FPS. And you can see the game plays extremely well, super smooth. And I really like how this game looks and plays on this system. Awesome stuff. Because he's coming out after that man. Well, Chark. Oh, and there you go. David. Next, I connected my retro station PC4U drive just to see what happens. I then loaded up Ultra Street Fighter 2, the final challenges for Switch. And as you can see, the game plays pretty good at around 60 FPS with no issues. Okay, so here are the results for the Wi-Fi speed test. We achieved download speeds of 56 and upload speeds of 15 megabits per second. And for your information, this is typically the top speeds we achieve in our office. So that brings us to our benchmarks, beginning with Geekbench single core score of 1636 and multi-core score of 9184. And in the Antutu benchmark test, we achieved a score above 1 million, which has actually never happened in a mini PC before on this channel. And finally, here is the CPU benchmark score by Passmark, so we achieved just over 25,000. So now let's see how this compares to the other mini PCs of this year. So here is my top performing mini PC chart for 2022, allowing you to see which mini PCs perform the best and also lets you compare the specs, features and the prices. Now all the mini PCs you see are ranked by overall benchmark results. Now I have also added two more useful categories. We've got clock speeds, bass and turbo, and I've also added maximum TDP. So as you can see, the B-Link GTR6 achieves position one on this chart with the highest benchmark results we have seen across the board. This is, without a doubt, the most powerful mini PC we have tested on this channel so far. Now you can view the full versions of all my charts online at chickstech.com and read them at your leisure completely free of charge. 
So there you have it guys, that was the B-Link GTR6. Now this one is real nice for the price. I absolutely love the ample connectivity. I've actually never come across a PC or a mini PC with four HDMI ports, and these are HDMI 2.1 ports that support 8K at 60 Hertz. Now I don't actually have an 8K television at the moment to test this on, but I certainly will in the near future, making this product future-proof. The specifications are already very good, but the ability to upgrade the RAM and storage at a later stage adds to that future proofing. And it's also nice that you have a spare SSD slot to play with. Build quality is great as expected from B-Link mini PCs. Performance is superb, whether it's general office applications, web browsing, playing AAA PC games, 4K video editing, desktop publishing, you name it, this PC can handle it. Windows 11 Pro comes pre-installed and activated. I really appreciate having some ports on the front for easy access. Now that being said, if any of you out there wanted a small form factor mini PC, but were underwhelmed by the performance or the power, then this is the one you need to get. It has all the power to meet your every need. I absolutely can't recommend this one enough. Hopefully grab a deal for Black Friday. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of this one. Meanwhile, I will leave the links in the description box so you guys can check this product out. That's all for this video. Don't forget to like and sub to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you all have an amazing day. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.